This video is brought to you by the Fractal Design Define R5 computer case, featuring expansive radiator support and noise-optimized engineering. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! Well, hello there, everyone. If you can't tell, I'm kind of like a kid in a candy store today because I have all of the water cooling parts that are going to be going with my epic water cooling build, which is right, right there. You can't even see that, can you? There. That one. That's... That's the computer, see? That's, this is my epic build in progress. Okay, it's really heavy. Now, if you wanna see any of the videos I've already done on this project, you can check out my uh, water cooling pros and cons discussion that I did with Jay's Two Cents. Uh, I'll post a link to that. You can also check out my build or my build to date of this, which I did a time lapse of. I'll also post a link to that down in the video's description. First and foremost for today though, I need to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to uh, the sponsors for the water cooling components here. So we have EK, of course, uh, who jumped in pretty early on. So thank you, EK. They sent over all this stuff you can see here from fans to radiators to blocks. Also a massive thank you to Primo Chill. They've just recently jumped in as well. They are providing the fittings and the tubing. So uh, we have their rigid tubing fittings that you can see right here. And then we also have PETG tubing that they have sent over. But uh, I'm gonna, uh oh, and a, and a tubing bending kit. We're gonna be doing tubing bending. Uh, so I'm gonna go kind of do an unboxing and a, and a look at all of these parts for you guys today. Not a whole lot of building going on, unfortunately, but that's coming soon and Jay has already promised he's gonna help me out. So hit the like button if you enjoy epic water cooling builds and if you want to see more of them. Okay, one more thing announcement wise, and that is that uh, this piece of the build has also arrived. It's glass, it's tempered glass. In my opinion, it is infinitely superior to plexiglass, and I'm also gonna be doing a side panel mod to replace the side panel with mostly tempered glass. So that's cool too, right? And here we are, and there it all is. And before I go ahead and start tearing things out of their boxes, let me go ahead and run down all the stuff that I have right out here in front of me, and then I'll go through um, one at a time and uh, take each one out and then give you a closer look. So let's start with the uh, water blocks for the graphics cards. They're right here. These are from EK, the EK FC980. These are made specifically for the uh, GTX WinForce 3 or the uh, GTX Gaming WinForce graphics cards. These two right here specifically. So I'm going to be pulling off those uh, GPU heatsink fans and I'm going to be dropping on these two GPU coolers and I'll be handling that with Jay as well as hopefully the rest of this water cooling build uh, this coming Saturday and then hopefully have you guys the uh, video for it after that. Of course uh, we need back plates and uh, these are the EK FC980 GTX 143 back plates. Big surprise, they are the back plates that are made to go with these uh, GPU blocks and that are again made specifically to go with the WinForce GTX 980 G1 Gamings from Gigabyte. Okay, I have a pump and reservoir both in this box. That's the EK X Res 140 D5 PWM. It's the black acetal finish. And of course, I have all these fans. Uh, you guys might have seen Jay's video on the uh, new EK Vardar fans. I have the Furious Vardar, which I think means angry father in Slovenian. I, that, I could be wrong. Uh, but these are 120s. They go all the way up to 3000 RPM. I got them because they're all black. Um, and also they're good fans too. Uh, of course, we need to connect the GPUs together since there's two of them. So this is a terminal, so a dual parallel three slot since I'm gonna go three slot spacing to give a little bit of space between the GPUs and make things look kind of cool. Uh, that's to connect those two together. And then of course we have the CPU block, which is the EK Supremacy Evo. One with the white version here because it's a black and white build if you can't tell. And uh, I thought that might match up a bit more nicely with everything in the case and make the block stand out a little bit more. Uh, as you can see right now, I've got the Fractal Kelvin cooler in there, which has been doing a nice job for me. But uh, the CPU block is going to go right there at the center, and I think that's going to stand out quite nicely, especially since I'm going to have uh, a windowed side panel on here once that mod is finished. And then lastly, on the EK side, we have uh, two radiators, of course, the 240 and the 360, both the Coolstream PE, which is a little bit thinner of a radiator, and uh, I needed thinner ones because I don't have a whole lot of space to work with up front. Going to need to figure out what to do with that drive cage among other things. But wait, there's more. Of course, Primo Chill jumped in here too and they are, were helping me out big time with the fittings that you can see here, as well as the tubing. Now I do have some flexible tubing. I grabbed that because um, when you're setting stuff up, sometimes it helps to have flexible tubing available. And uh, to go along with that flexible tubing, I also have, fle I have flexible tubing fittings. Um, 
that are right there. I just got four of those, and those are just to drop on in case I need them. The actual fittings that are made for the hardline uh, PETG tubing that we're going to be using are these right here. Now, you might notice I have a few extras. I got a total of, how many is that, 18? Well, I got 10 blacks because uh, that's how many I need is 10. But I also got the white ones because I think I might want to alternate. Um, not alternate, but depending on the thing. So like the water block, for example, is white. So I'll probably use black fittings on that. And then the uh, connector for the GPUs is black. So I'll probably use white fittings on that. That's kind of what I'm thinking of doing just to make them stand out a little bit more. Uh, they gave me some extra rings there as well. So there's, there's the fittings. Super sweet. And then of course the tubing, rigid PETG tubing. You can also go with rigid acrylic, but Jay recommends the PETG. So I go with his advice since he is my uh, mentor on this particular project. This is 3 8 inch inner diameter or 10 millimeters and 1 half inch outer diameter or, or 13 millimeters. And uh, they come in a pack of, gosh, how many of these? Oh, they come in a pack of 12, which again is more than you need, but they're 36 inches long. But that's cool since I'm going to be learning how to do this. And then of course, uh, we also have the Primo Chill tube bending kit, which is basically some gloves uh, that you can wear while you're bending the tubing that uh, hopefully won't mess with it if it's warm. Uh, some microfiber cloth, the little tube that you put inside the tube, because you have to have a tube inside the tube when you warm it up in order to bend it so it won't collapse. And then of course, some of this spray stuff, which I imagine is to keep your breath minty fresh. So for starters, I have pulled the EK FC 980 GTX WF3 GPU block as well as the EK FC 980 GTX WF3 backplate out of their boxes to show you guys what all comes with and of course give you a closer look. So starting here with the GPU, of course you're going to get uh, the stuff you need to do the installation which is a bit more in depth than your typical like video card installation or something like that. So you're going to need new thermal paste. Uh, they've been giving you a fat Allen wrench to remove the plugs. They've given you a set of these small screws, which you're going to use to attach it. Of course, you got some thermal pads here. You're going to need to replace those around stuff like the uh, the memory uh, modules as well as the power delivery stuff like MOSFETs. Uh, some very detailed installation instructions here and uh, very specific because this is not necessarily an entry level project. And then, of course, the GPU block itself, which is right here. The EK logo is covered up, and I'm going to leave that covered up for now, at least to keep it from getting too fingerprinted. Don't know if you can tell, but it's got a very, very slight texture to the finish here up on the top. So you can see the LC Solution FC980 GTX WF3. Uh, you can see here where the plugs are going to connect, and that's where that... Uh, I'm actually going to be removing that so I can do that combo adapter thing. What's that called? Uh, the terminal. The terminal dual parallel 3 slot. Uh, to add that on. Then of course on the back you can see the nickel plated copper so tons and tons of copper back there for contact not just with the GPU but also with uh, all the other important heat generating elements of the graphics card and then of course you can see all the connection points and that good stuff so um, I am going to put this back in the baggie it came in very quickly to keep myself from getting any stuff inside those little channels. Um, but then of course we have the backplate over here too. Uh, backplate also comes with its own set of instructions, also comes with its own set of screws, also comes with its own set of thermal pads to drop on there. And then of course uh, with a look at it, we can see that it looks very similar to the GPU block. Except on the back, instead of a lot of nickel plated copper, we have just these channels and everything like that. So uh, still looks really cool. And that is actually going to be the top looking down at the graphics cards. So this will be in here like like something like this, sort of, kind of. So that cutout over there is for the uh, SLI bridges. Um, but there's a look at the GPU stuff. And silly me, I said there's all the GPU stuff, but uh, I forgot about the terminal. So the terminal is at the end, and you only need a terminal if you're doing more than one GPU together, because uh, what the block, the GPU block actually comes with is just a single GPU terminal. And it's set up, as you can see, all of the holes are open because you have lots of different options for where you want the inlet and the outlet to be. Um, you can basically go in bottom or the top. Either way, as long as you plug one and unplug the other and yeah. Um, but for this one, you can set this one up to connect, as you see on that side, to two of the GPUs. So two of those slots go to two of the GPUs. And you can actually configure this uh, little terminal to be serial, uh, which would feed to one GPU and then down and then to the other one, or in parallel to feed to both of them at the same time. So depending on where you put the plugs and all that stuff, that's how that works. But then those three little holes right there is where these attach, and I need to remove that single card terminal to put this dual card terminal on. 
Heading now on to the EK X Res 140 DS PWM pump and reservoir. Um, you get two sets of instructions for this one. One's for the uh, pump itself, and then this one is for the mounting bracket that it's, it comes included. Uh, this mounting bracket is probably going to be necessary, although I still haven't exactly determined where the pump and res are going to go. Probably in this area. I might try to stack it on top of that drive cage because I do need the drive cage in there. Again, that's that's we'll figure all that out. Uh, apart from that, you get some accessories, uh, little feet and other mounting stuff for connecting stuff. This little foam thing here is for anti-vortex. Um, so if you're getting a vortex swirly in your reservoir and it's causing air to suck down into it, which is bad, you can drop that in there. Hopefully that won't be needed. Um, and then I feel like I'm going to have tons of these little big fat Allen wrenches by the time we're done. Some more plugs and fittings in there. All G1 quarter, of course. And then the pump, which you can see is sticking with the EK kind of circle square, circle square styling that they have going on. Again, a very simple design, very clean design, much like the GPU blocks and much like the back plates. And even like the terminal uh, interchange, very simple, clean designs, which is why I felt like EK would be such a great fit for this build in particular, because it's kind of a simple, basic black and white theme. Apart from that, there is an EK logoed kind of stand up thing in there, as you can see. Uh, and then that's where all liquid goes. It's called the uh, EK X Res 140 because I assume it can hold like 140 liters or something. And now we have uh, radiators as well as the fan uh, that I took just one out of the box. I'm not going to take all of them uh, out of the box. Uh, the radiators though are the LC Solution Coolstream PE, as you can see is the label down there. So these are all copper uh, fins that we have here on the inside. As you can see, the ports are currently plugged over here. EK logos, uh, and then this one is 360 or 3x120, three and this one is uh, 240 or 2x120, two and uh, here's one of the EK Vardar fans. If you want some more information on these EK Vardar fans, and I probably am not pronouncing that properly, but oh well, uh, Jay already did a video on them. He had the uh, lower RPM ones that have gray fan blades. I went for these, like I said, because they have all black fan blades, and I didn't think the gray would really go. Uh, particularly well, although who knows, the gray might have looked okay too. I didn't know though that they had these, oh my gosh, bright red uh, sleeved cables, which isn't all that bad. They're, they're, it's a nice little sleeving job there. However, no plans for red in my system, so uh, I might have to also figure out a solution for that. We'll see how uh, bright they are. But as you can see, it's got some vents there to provide some cooling for the uh, actual motor on the inside. And uh, as Jay found in his testing, these are very powerful and also very, very quiet, so very, very much looking forward to those. And I've got enough uh, for a just push configuration on both of these, so five spots, five fans. I'm not doing push-pull, um, and that's simply because I don't have room in the case. And finally, we have the CPU block, the EK Supremacy Evo White Edition. Now, the Supremacy Evo has long been regarded as a very, very, uh, or one of the best CPU blocks available on the market, and the Evo has, uh, or I'm sorry, EK has quite a few different variations of it. Um, this is the white version, which I got because my build's black and white, surprise, surprise. Apart from the block itself, you get a couple back plates, which I'm not gonna need for AMD as well as uh, other Intel uh, sockets, aside from Enthusiast. Mounting hardware that's located right there. Uh, you get a couple of these little jet plates, uh, where it's actually some internal components for the blocks. So you can switch those out to uh, switch the diameter. That's, uh, I'm guessing, gonna change the amount of uh, water or liquid that's flowing through there. This is another internal component here which you can swap out, um, which I'm actually not 100% sure of, of what it does. I'm guessing it's if you want to switch or reverse the flow uh, in there, then that's something that you can do, but I'm going to double check with Jay, so I guess you guys will have to watch the building video to find an actual answer for that. EK has also provided you with uh, some thermal paste, thankfully, and uh, that about does it, but let's take a closer look at the block. So as you can see, all white finish. Again, there's an EK logo there that's covered by a sticker, which I'm not going to remove yet. Um, pretty simple, clean design. Again, on the outside, you can see the bottom has a please remove before use sticker covering the finish on there on the copper plate. And that's pretty much it. Uh, it looks fairly simple, but internally there's a uh, it's got some this plastic piece which channels the liquid over the copper fins and helps to effectively dissipate heat. But uh, let me switch over now and talk a little bit more about these uh, fittings that I got here from Primo Chill. And uh, although my alignment of them has gotten messed up a little bit, um, the reason I got black and white was because I was pretty sure, even though I got this all white um, uh, CPU block here, that 
I wouldn't want to go like white on white because that doesn't really completely match, unfortunately. So I'm okay having them both in the case, but I wouldn't want them right on top of each other. Plus, I think a black fitting right there is going to pop a lot more. Same goes for these white fittings. I'm putting them on a, something black like the radiator. That'll make those pop a lot more. So um, that's kind of why I have the two color option going, as you can see. And now that I have all this stuff like out of the box and I've finally been playing around with it, I really, really can't wait. So I hope you guys are with me on that one. And that is all for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you're wondering how the heck I got everything back into these boxes so pristinely. I don't know how I did it. I'm just, it's just magic. Don't forget to also head over to store.paulshardware.net. You can buy a shirt like this one and that helps support the cause. You can change your link to Amazon to my Amazon link and then I get a little kickback when you shop at Amazon. That helps too. And if nothing else, thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next one. We'll see you next time.